Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about the vast majority of crypto and finance. And with that being said, I hope that you are all having a beautiful day or a beautiful night if you guys are out there in the world. So it has definitely been a crazy week already for crypto and it's only Wednesday. I have been mentioning a lot of things around these ETFs specifically targeting the idea of manipulation um currently speaking i feel as though we need to be cautious because we don't know what's going to happen right and i feel as though anyone out there that is acting impulsively by selling into this news or buying into this news i feel as though they are going to get wrecked we should have been prepared for this along the way uh we should already have been in our long-term positions we should already have stable coins on the sidelines things like that i always say to prepare for either scenario you don't have to act impulsively and you know risk losing money on events like this i even say this with uh you know the fed announcements and fed events you don't really need to act impulsively there's no reason to overcomplicate things don't get stuck in leveraged positions without stop losses you need to make sure that you are taking risk management 100 percent seriously but at this current moment in time right when we look at the market currently after a day that we had yesterday bitcoin dominance is dropping ethereum dominance is moving which means we could be seeing some front running happening around ethereum with possible ethereum etfs this could definitely get interesting pretty quick but also outside of that it is still mostly a bloodbath on the 24 hour span for most altcoins. We are still seeing some green. Some altcoins are starting to wake up a little bit, and this is due to Ethereum actually gaining some momentum. Now, I feel as though we still need to be cautious and be prepared to buy a major dip if we get it. Now, if we don't get a dip, hey, that's fine. I, I saw a comment actually on the previous video saying that it's a win win scenario because. They have stable coins on the sidelines and they're already in position. That's exactly how we should be positioned right now. That's how we are prepared. But outside of this, right, the overall thought process is that ETFs are about to be approved. There's, there's no way that they're not going to get approval. Again, I still feel as though it's a 50-50. We don't know. We're going to talk about that here in a second. But first, the SEC getting absolutely thrown under the bus. I mean. This, I love to see this because for the last few years, we have been getting absolutely tormented by Gary Gensler and the SEC. And even before Gary Gensler, technically, Jay Clayton was also slaughtering the crypto uh, market. We have Gary Gensler getting absolutely roasted in the press after yesterday's false Bitcoin ETF approval. You love to see it. Will the SEC investigate itself after Gary Gensler dealt embarrassing blow in Bitcoin ETF debacle? But this is not the only one. We have been uh, witnessing quite a bit of mainstream media going after Gary Gensler. Even Congress now talking about possibly looking into Gary Gensler and probing this entire um, investigation. I mean, it's, it's definitely crazy to see. But again, I feel as though this is all by plan. I feel, I, I, I feel like we're getting a lot of this. How should I say it? It's um, a distraction right? We've been distracted for a while around the SEC. Oh, is Gary Gensler about to get fired? Is the SEC about to, you know, get completely thrown out from crypto and not have any jurisdiction over crypto? And it's going to go to the CFTC. It's going to go to Congress. Like there has been so much nonsense around that. You got to remember who Gary Gensler works for. You got to remember who the SEC is. This is all tied together. And also we got a little bit more of an in-depth view on the fact that now, apparently from the safety account on X, that the investigation confirmed that the SEC Gov account was compromised. A lot of people are, are under the impression that Elon Musk was, he, he got compromised. And what I mean by that is, it seems as though Elon Musk is playing into this as well. Now, again, listen, I could wear a tinfoil hat all day long and say, I think that all of this is connected. I think that they're all working together. I think that there's a lot of payments going around. I feel as though they're all manipulating the system. 
And that's the easiest way to go about this. But also, we don't know what's really going on. But I would not look past anything with Gary Gensler and the SEC. Because they have harmed more retail investors than anything in this crypto industry and even outside of this industry. You got to remember that Gary Gensler let SBF walk through the doors and walk right out while letting $16 billion, and who knows, it probably was more, get completely burnt away. So when we really look at the SEC and Gary Gensler, uh, it's questionable, right? But also, look at this. They can confirm that the account did not have two-factor authentication enabled at the time the account was compromised. But also, the actual phone number associated with the SEC, SEC Gov account got obtained by an unidentified individual. So the, account, the, the phone number associated with the account was compromised, but also, Two-factor authentication was not enabled. This is very odd. First off, this is a government phone number. I'm assuming at least. It's also a government agency's account getting compromised. And the timeline between the account getting compromised and Gary Gensler talking about how the account did get compromised is just very suspicious. And we've talked about it, right? But I feel as though everyone is still refreshing Gary Gensler's account, the SEC Gov account, and it's all in anticipation for an announcement regarding the ETFs. Now, a lot of people came to the conclusion that the ETFs are going to get denied because of the post yesterday. We don't know, and we can't come to that conclusion. Like I said, this is a 50-50. And really, anyone you know jumping into positions right now to long or short are merely just gambling. Obviously, if they have stop losses in place, which you should always do if you are leverage playing, then hey, that's fine. But I feel as though everyone is hopeful for the approval, which means that we probably get the opposite. But again, who knows, right? Anything can happen. Um, but this was from the 9th. This was from yesterday when we did get the, compromise, um, the compromised account tweeting out about the ETF approval. But here we have Justin, spot Bitcoin ETF applicant. Valkyrie co-founder says he expects approval on Wednesday and trading on Thursday, which I don't believe that this is going to be the case, in my opinion. Of course, I could be wrong, um, and I welcome me being wrong because it means that the market is probably going to erupt a little bit. But also, everything has been aligning for the idea that the market is going to be so damn bullish in the short term. For example, Jim Cramer says Bitcoin is topping out. Followed by Jamie Dimon being on Fox Business talking about how Bitcoin doesn't have any value. And this is just recently. Now, I said that this is bullish, right? But it's bullish on the macro. And I feel as though a lot of people overlook this in terms of time frame. Like even Jim Cramer saying that Bitcoin is topping out. Remember, he was bearish at the beginning of December of uh, 2022, right into 2023. The market did not erupt for a month after. And even then, he was still bearish. It takes time. These are lagging factors, right? So in the short term, we could still see a major opportunity. We could still see a major crash in the market. And I'm going to be addressing that here in a second. But we have JP Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon says Bitcoin doesn't have value. Meanwhile, JP Morgan is an unauthor or sorry, is an authorized uh, participant for BlackRock's spot Bitcoin ETF. And check this out. There's also new regulation coming on Bitcoin. And you, you know, famously said recently that you would shut it down if you were in government. Can you give us more clarity on that? What I've always said is that Bitcoin doesn't have value. And I don't care what people do with Bitcoin. But what I was also pointing out is that the, the, the actual use cases are sex trafficking tax avoidance, you know, anti-money laundering, uh, terrorism financing. It's not people just buying and selling Bitcoin. That, that's, there's no value to, you know, if you, you're buying and selling Bitcoin. It's been a rough... So I'm assuming that he probably took this, uh, this script out of the playbook from Senator Warren. Uh, we've, we've talked about how Elizabeth Warren definitely has been touting the same nonsense. By the way, JP Morgan, the actual bank, we know that they have funded all of what he said in the past. They are one of the biggest criminals out there in the banking and financial industry. They've also manipulated forex markets, commodities markets, and they even manipulate the crypto market. How do we know that? Because since 2020, 
they have uh, been working with Onyx. Onyx is by JP Morgan. This is the first bank-led blockchain platform. <laughs> so him talking about how you know bearish Bitcoin is and how you know Bitcoin doesn't have any value tied to it, all that all it is is to gain dominance over the market. That's all it really is. They they're terrified of you know the free market. And when I say the free market, I mean a market that is not controlled by any big player like JP Morgan that by the way, back in like roughly March, April of 2023, they controlled 10% of all US bank deposits. So when we're talking about the manipulation and the monopoly game that is being played here, JP Morgan definitely is number one at that. But let's talk about a few things. So on par with the ETF, right? Which could be a buy, buy the news, it could be a sell the news. I'm not one to make up that decision. In my opinion, I think that the ETF approval, um, I think that this, this big news event that everyone is betting on, I think that's going to be short-term bearish. That's my overall guess here. The reason why I say that is because there's far too much aligning for bullish market movement. So in the short term, give or, give or take a week or two, maybe three weeks, it's going to be bearish. After that, the market's going to erupt. We also have major economic reports coming out this week. Today, nothing too crazy, but tomorrow and Friday, and remember, this data is heavily manipulated. Um, a lot of it's false. It, it's not accurate, which we've talked about in the past as well. The Fed has been manipulating us for a while around CPI data and stuff like that. They don't even include significant things that matter for CPI. But nonetheless, we get a lot of these big reports. It's going to be questionable on what happens. But again, this is what could also make the market move in either direction. We still need to be very cautious here. As we look at Bitcoin right now, it is trading at about roughly 45, almost 0.6K. We have been trading against major resistance. I told you guys yesterday that the SEC, you know, compromised account came at a perfect time right at resistance and caused us to sell off. So, and, and by the way, we, we wicked down to a nice area. The big thing that we are looking at right now on uh, Bitcoin so so for an example here you guys have the daily chart the big thing here is just maintaining this trend line so as long as we're holding above roughly i'd say forty two thousand dollars we might get wicks below it as long as we hold above forty two thousand dollars we are very very bullish in the short term if we lose this things can get very ugly very fast and we're talking about roughly the mid thirty thousand dollar range on prices on bitcoin now, again, I would not write off a major market flush happening right before the big moves. I've talked about this in the past. If you go all the way back to um, March of 2020, so I actually have this trend line here that we lost just for an example. But either way, here you guys have March of 2020. Now, the market was not as bullish, right? It was starting. Then we got the, the major bearish you know, moves. This was unprecedented. We, don't, we, we can't say that a March of 2020 event's coming. It's, I, I don't think that it is. But there, there will be major pullbacks along the way at resistance. Like for example, I've talked about this in the Discord. If we look at some of the uh, price pullbacks here, like this alone was a 30% pullback. Right now, we're still very well green on the weekly. And if we do go back to the daily chart here, so if we go to the wick above uh, resistance here, and we go to where we are at now, this is a 7.5% pullback on Bitcoin. This is nothing. Even if we came back down to to test the trend line, this would be about roughly almost a 12% pullback. That is nothing. If we're talking about a 30% pullback or something like that, then you're addressing the mid $30,000 range, which is why I said that could very well happen. And remember, this was right before the market really erupted. This was the beginning stages of the bull run. This is January. So as we look at this space, yeah, I personally believe that this could be one of the largest opportunities uh, that we have right now in the market. I think that this will be the last major opportunity to buy very, very cheap altcoins. And what I mean by that is, it's not the last opportunity to buy during you know, the bull run, but it's the last major opportunity that we have to buy very cheap altcoins. Because if we do get that mid $30,000 range, there's going to be so much blood in the water, there's going to be a lot of pain, 
and also a lot of people panicking. During that time, you want to make sure that you are focused. Don't have your judgment cloud it. The reason why I'm bringing all of this up is because dominance is still around 50%. And we're on the four hour here. If we go to the daily, everyone has been saying Bitcoin dominance, it's topped out. All coins are ready. And although, yeah, right, when we look at Ethereum, Ethereum dominance is gaining some traction. But I personally believe that Bitcoin dominance does go higher in the short term. Um, there will be pullbacks along the way on Bitcoin dominance as well. We have we have noticed this even in the past. If we go all the way back in time uh, to the 2020 and 2021 bull run, I mean, look at the pullbacks along the way leading up to Bitcoin dominance really breaking out. There's going to be pullbacks along the way. So as we really look at Bitcoin dominance still being a, a, above 50%, this could cause a lot of pain for the altcoin market if we do have a significant pullback. And again, I feel as though the ETF news, the ETF you know, announcements and all of the mainstream media uh, going crazy on bullish targets for Bitcoin. And we have you know, Jim Cramer being bearish. We have Jamie Dimon being bearish. All of this is at a time in the market where I just feel as though we're being manipulated because think about it. They know Jim Cramer is a big signal for the retail sector to go against what he's saying. Everyone knows that we go against Jamie Dimon and all of the big players around the banking sector. So it, they're just merely utilizing them as pawns. That's all it is. They're playing chess against the retail sector. Again, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know everything. I'm not perfect. I'm human. But if I had to make an educated guess on what's going to be happening, short-term pain, long-term gain. The long-term here is still very bullish. Short-term, I am slightly cautious here. And I do think that we do have a major pullback and a great buying opportunity. So we need to make sure that we are prepared for that. We need to make sure that we are ready for that in case we get it. Again, don't act impulsively. We're not selling any of our long-term conviction plays that we have a lot of confidence behind. Um, I haven't sold at all. I do have stable coins on the sidelines, 10 to 15% allocated just in case we get major swings to the bottom. Um, right now, I'm really focused on a lot of those categories and in the industries that I've been talking about for a while being very bullish, aka gaming, AI, um, social, social fi, real world asset tokenization, deep in things like that. Those are the big ones to focus on. So with that being set up, you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on because I'm a free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord in the description below. And with that being said, guys, it's been Nick. Peace out.